Welcome back, everyone. Glad to have you aboard. Thanks for watching. This is Eric KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts. And you've clicked on the video. Hopefully, you want to learn before you go any farther. Click the subscribe button and follow along. Lately, we're talking on one HF band at a time in a mini series. Discovering quickly each one of the HF bands as you're a newcomer to the hobby or someone that's just brushing up on your skills. Maybe you'll learn something from these videos and see each and every band at its finest. Today we're talking about the Holy Grail, 20 meters. Who hasn't heard of 20 meters? 14 megahertz, that's where all the action is, right? That's where everybody goes. That's where you need to operate, 20 meters. Well, there's a lot of places to operate, but I've got you hyped up enough. Let's talk about the 20 meter band. Let's take a look at 20 meters and see the band plan here on the ARRL radio bands chart here. 20 meters looks like 15 in relation to 17 and 12. You have different band portions for different license classes. So general portion, advanced portion, and extra class, of course, giving you all privilege across the entire band. Now there's a lot to be had on general. Do not think that you immediately have to get on extra. But general portion from 14.225 to 14.350 gives you quite a bit of room there, especially during a, uh, a busy weekend or a contest. There's always people hanging out in the general section. Now, this is upper sideband foam, sideband uh, upper side. On the lower portion of the band, Again, more digital, ready data, but I'm going to show you another slide that I didn't show you in previous videos because now we're getting into a band that has a lot of stuff going on. Take a look at this site here. Now, I'm not sure where this information came from on bandplans.com, but I have found that a lot of it is correct. I happen, I happen to look here when I'm checking out a digital mode or another different area of the band that I haven't played with to see whereabouts the frequencies are and they're not in, they're, these are not stapled frequencies, but these are, I guess, suggested frequencies. And what I've noticed is a lot of them are right. So starting where in 20 meters, PSK31. Now this is, 20 meters is the hotbed for PSK31 and 63 and 125. PSK frequency is 14.070. And I can guarantee you that when you go to 20 meters and you go to 14.070, even on a bad day. Now, everybody says the bands are shot lately, but I can tell you right now, if you go to 14.070 during the day, even the late evening, you will find signals there. I don't care what conditions the bands are in, you will find PSK here. With that being said, there's a lot of other suggested frequencies, like Hell Schreiber is another one, a video coming up very shortly. I love Hell Schreiber. Thor, Olivia, I've done a video on Olivia, you can check out on my channel. And these frequencies, the suggested ones, happen to be correct. So, JT65, around 14.076, and one that's not on here, FT8, around 14.074, or thereabouts. It depends on where, you know, people are not really on that exact frequency nowadays. So FT8, lots and lots and lots of FT8 on here, and JT65 and JT9. Moving up in the upper portion of the lower portion of the band, Riddy, a lot of Riddy going on, especially on Riddy contest days. There's a lot of CW down here also, all right, 14. From the beginning of the band to the PSK frequency, all the CW you can handle on 20. Moving up here, another one I want to show you. So, Pactor, 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 however you want to pronounce it, um, is a data, they win, win link 2000. It's pretty much what a lot of people use on boats, what a lot of people use to send email data over HF. They use Pactor with a modem and some other gear. Um, up here, we have, I've done MT63, but I want to go up here a little farther. And check this out. Now, sci uh, Slow Scan TV right here at 14.230. Slow Scan TV, some people think, has been by the wayside, but there are still people doing that. Now, that may be a video coming up soon in the future. But what I want to tell you is this. Check out the software for Slow Scan TV and load it up. What you do is tune in to 20, 
you're not having a good day or you just don't feel like being on the radio, set it to 14.230 and walk away. Let the software decode. You'll be amazed when you come back and you see how many pictures and all the different kind of electronic QSL cards that they send over Slow Scan TV from different countries around the world. How many of them collected on your screen? It's amazing. It might surprise you. Some of the cards there are quite graphic too. But Slow Scan TV, then you have Digital Voice. Now, Digital Voice is pictured D Star over HF. It's not a D Star uh, branded mode here, but it's a Digital Voice. And uh, you can do that up here around 14.236. And that's a whole different ballgame when you're talking about sideband, sideband versus uh, digital on HF. It's not one of my interests right this second, but of course I'll get back into it. And up here you can find some nets, such as the Maritime Mobile Net. Now this net can be used like a beacon, all right? 15 hours per day, every time you go to 14. 300 you will find uh, people net control people checking into the maritime mobile net that's people on boats people on watercraft waterways they're checking into the 14.300 everyone is welcome so make sure you check that out and at least listen and some other frequencies up here now back in the day <laughs> the 14.313 is what we used to call channel 19 that was uh, some pretty trashy stuff going on there, but has since been cleaned up quite a bit. So you can see a lot of stuff going on on 20. Now, I didn't show this in the past, but if you go to this site and you check out, say, 12 meters, you know, you can find frequencies where people hang out for PSK and JT65 and FT8 on 12 meters. Although it's not that popular and a lot of people aren't participating because they think the band is dead. But... There are suggested frequencies for all the bands, and 20 just seems that it's got a lot going on. From experience, I can tell you, a lot of stuff happens on 20. So it's worth looking, I'll put this in the description, it's worth uh, looking at the suggested frequencies here, and what people are doing. Taking a look at dxmaps.com again, and I've said before, this is just a site I look at occasionally that shows people inputting their call signs and the DX contact, and reporting a propagation or a spot on the map. Now, under no circumstances should you or any amateur radio operator be looking or referring to a site like this and assuming this is the propagation in your area. Doesn't work like that. There's probably 10,000 people on the radio right now that are not even aware of this site, let alone putting it in a spotting website. So you don't know what's going on unless you get on the radio and listen on the bands. With that being said, this is just an example. What you see here in the middle is called the gray line. And the gray line is your transition between daylight and darkness. The gray line is basically well off the coast of the United States. So the sunset has already set in California hours ago. And... So what's happening here is when the gray line is over here, over, let's say, western United States, that's the sun setting. At the same time, the sun is rising over here by Japan and other countries, China and Pacific Islands and India and everywhere else. So at that point, you are beginning the daytime band and they are ending the daytime band. And now it gives you the perfect opportunity to work these countries here that you normally wouldn't work during the peak of the day. That's the magic of gray line here. At the same time, looking at the gray line here, which there is none because it's in the middle of the night, your conditions or prob probability of working from the United States to Europe in the middle of the night is probably slim to none. So in the morning, when the sun rises here, and the gray line spans from eastern United States, to somewhere over here in Asia or Europe may give you the perfect time early in the morning to work those DX stations across the Atlantic because now it may be sun rising in your area but the sun setting over here. So that's the magic of gray line and a lot of people, I know a couple people, I know Jan, KK4GGJ you've seen on my channel, likes to get on when the gray line and the sun setting and he talks to a couple guys in Australia and New Zealand 
because that's pretty much the time he gets a hold of them with the conditions. So the gray line is kind of like magic. So what could you expect from the 20-meter band as a newly licensed amateur radio operator? And the following statements are opinions of my own from my previous experience, the host of Ham Radio Concepts on YouTube, and are in no way, shape, or form a stapled fact on how amateur radio operates. Now, the 20-meter band is probably the widest playing field of all the amateur bands. So much is happening on 20 meters. 20 meters is really where a lot of people start when they're looking for a contact. Now, on a contest or a field day event, you'd be hard-pressed to find an available frequency on 20 meters. It's that cram-packed. Anything from digital, from CW, from slow-scan TV to phone operations happen on 20 meters. The hotbed of PSK, 20 meters. The world's, some of the world's best CW operators, 20 meters. There are people that operate 20 meters only for their 50-year span of amateur radio, and there are others that will never operate 20 again. There's a lot of nets on 20 meters, and a net is when everybody you know, has a round table, everybody checks in, they pass it around, you get to say something. There's a maritime mobile net, there's some other nets out there on 20 meters, and you know, it's hard to find a net on 10 or 12 meters. So 20 meters is where you start to see a lot of nets. Now, with that being said, you may run across an operator or a couple that are out there using $12,000 of radios, $8,000 of antennas, and bought 26 acres to supplement their amateur radio hobby for room for antennas. And you may find that operator makes you feel not as good as them because you're running a 100-watt entry-level rig and a dipole that you made in your backyard. Now, don't be discouraged by said operator. Sometimes it happens. Exchange your seven threes and move on. There may be an operator who resides in the extra portion, day in and day out, who will not travel to the general portion to make contacts because he feels it's lesser of him because he uses his extra class as a power trip. Now, I don't think amateur radio and the classes of license should be used like a power trip, but you may find that operator that, oh, well, I'm an extra class, and, uh, you know, you're, uh, you're 100 watts, yeah, I could hear you, but, you know, my, my four stacked Mosleys up at 5,000 feet are uh, not pulling you in, so, uh, you know, God bless you. I hope you get a better radio one day. You may run across that. Don't be discouraged, okay? There's always a select handful of people that just want to, Act like that. And, you know, the biggest piece of advice I can give you, there are a couple people that I knew in the amateur radio world. Uh, one is a silent key, God rest his soul, and the other is still an operator but doesn't operate much. And my Elmer, KI4LUY, Patrick, told me many years ago, he said, Eric, Christmas, tr Christmas presents are always better when they're wrapped under the tree. And I'll explain that for a second because that actually hit home for me. You know, there are people that have to have the best of the best of the best in the hobby. They have to have the latest and greatest radio that comes out, regardless of what anybody says, the most powerful amplifier, the most state-of-the-art transceiver, and the highest best antenna. And they have to have it the second they can get their hands on it. But of those two operators I mentioned, they don't operate radio. Well, the one is a silent key, but they, they quit operating radio. They got bored with it. I said, hey, all this stuff, don't you play with it? No. Nah. I got old, you know, I, I get on and look at the bands and I shut it off or I don't get on at all. You know, take the hobby a little bit at a time. That happened with me with a couple radios. I had to have them when I was newly licensed. I couldn't sleep until I got them. I was selling things to buy them. I was working extra hours to buy them and I got them and guess what? I don't have them anymore. I sold them. You know, you take a little bit. There's always something to do. You don't have to rush to an extra to make a good contact. You don't have to go broke buying a $500 antenna and a $6,000 radio to have fun. It's the best advice I can give you. Take a little bit at a time. There's always something evolving. There's always something going on in the amateur radio world. And to me, it's like opening a new present every time I get onto the air. So that's the best advice I can give you. 20 meters is the hopping band. Check it out. Don't be discouraged. And check out the next video that we're talking on 30 meters. Hope to see you there. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.